doodling this while chilling with my friend last night. So in last time's video, which you, if you haven't seen yet, I suggest that you know you see that first. The link is in the description below, so that you know, you know what I'm doing in this video. It makes it'll make more sense. So first things first, what I will do is I will redraw the new revised circuit diagram on the whiteboard, and um, then I will do that on the breadboard. I will test it out on the real Amiga, and we'll see. Okay, one very important suggestion that uh, somebody made <coughs> was about the uh, DC blocking capacitors. Now, initially, what I had done is I had just put them, you know, on the input just here in series, um, just put them like that, you know, positive and negative, and that's it. However, um, the important suggestion was that I need bipolar capacitors here because this would strain the capacitor and it would, you know, get warm and, you know, because it's obviously it needs DC. So what I need to do is another capacitor here. I don't have a bipolar, but basically what a bipolar capacitor is, is two electrolytic capacitors um, with, you know, polar universe. So it's two beside each other with both their negatives joined. And thank you, Breck, for that advice. And again, each of these is 47 microfarad or 47 off. <laughs> and each of these, I'm going to change it to 10 ohms. Right, so initially, I thought, okay, let's do a separate um, stereo separation adjustment for each channel, which I would need two variable resistors. However, you know, I would need more capacitors here. And another um, setup like this, you know, uh, on after each variable resistor, because if you were to, without the capacitors, if you were to turn one, it would adjust the stereo separation of both of them. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think of that in the last circuit diagram. What I've decided is, you know, for my needs, I think I only need one adjustment. So I will do the stereo separation adjustment on the output and it will make things a little more straightforward. So, Okay, so what I will do here is just simply join these together. The right to the right and the left to the left. And there we go. So the output will be here. Okay, so last week I determined which value you know, variable resistor I needed. I did some tests and uh, I managed to get some 1k variable resistors here. So, all I will need for this is a linear 1k variable resistor. Right, so here is the circuit diagram. So if anyone is, you know, following me on this and wishes to do the individual control for this, you know, for the for each of the inputs, uh, do let me know in the comments below and um, I will just, you know, do a separate circuit diagram for that and I will post it somewhere. I'll just do a quick posting. Okay, so now everything is connected. Now let's test Amiga audio. And this. Actually, first things first, let's connect your ears directly to this and see how loud it is. That's the original audio. Now it is a little quieter. <laughs> I haven't changed the volume. That's only 10 ohms. Anyway, let's check out the stereo separation.
so that works and it's perfect now let's start building this thing For this I have two project boxes, both are my favorite colors actually, deep red and um, this kind of aqua oceany kind of blue. Mm, I feel that this one's gonna look nicer. So let's begin. Noticed, I've realized one thing that I do not have any terminal bill, terminal, terminal pins, <laughs> and um, I, well, I, I'm sure I do have them. I just I cannot find them anywhere. So I'm just gonna have to solder the wires directly under the board. I do not like doing that, but hey, I've got no choice. which are ground, blue is right and green is left. So I need two for the inputs, one for the output and of course all the grounds. And yeah, we got all the wires sorted out so I can just put the big freaking wheels away. <laughs> you are wondering, this, this music is Amiga mod music. Well, some of it's from games, but uh, the other is mods which I just got from Aminet or something like this. It's the stuff I used to, you know, sometimes listen to when I was a teenager. <laughs> okay, I've, I've put all the grounds on the circuit. These the RCA grounds and this the, the um, output jack ground. What I'm gonna have to do now is just join these grounds together to make so I need to make tracks for that and I really hit this helping hand I'm wondering if it's helpful at all side the capacitor is done. Let me just check everything is fine. Yes. Just neaten that up a bit. Okay, that's fine. to do now is just solder you know this side exactly identical like that and two more wires which I forgot for the variable resistor <laughs> Just 
jump these wires over one another. Oh no, I can actually solder it around. Okay, that's good, I'll do that. Okay, that's better. I feel better now. <laughs> I feel better now. One thing which I'm never going to do again is use double-sided matrix board. Oh my god, this is so hard to use because the, the solder melts all the way through and you just... You know, it's hard to make tracks, which is why I'm mostly making tracks out of the component legs themselves. <sighs> Freaking pain. So the green one, which is this. Okay, so those two have been so those two have been bridged. This is mostly done now. Let's just hope it doesn't need any freaking recapping anytime soon. 3.5 millimeter jack socket. And um, just to, you know, just for reference, the, the two that are folded down are the switch. This one is ground, you know, this outer shell here connects to that, that's ground. This one is left and this one is right. So that's gonna be blue wire, green wire and white wire. basically done. Um, the only thing I need to do now is uh, do the RCA cables, but those will have to be mounted within you know, the actual case itself. So I'm going to have to start drilling holes in here you know, for the RCA. These two will go in here, left, right, and these two will go in here, left, right. 
so I'm back up here in the nice warmth from the garage and uh, I've drilled the holes that I needed okay it's a little bigger than it should be but it's me no no I'm gonna be good at this stuff someone stole my proper pliers I have to use these big freaking freaks Right. I'm on second battery and battery is running out and I'm almost done <laughs> and uh, I had to put duct tape on it because you know it'll be, it'll um, con contact with the inputs however I can get away with just sliding it in just like that <laughs> just about get away with it <laughs> where are my small pliers someone stole them Let's hope the whole thing works. If this ever needs recapping, I, s I swear I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and that seems fine. Let's hope this freaking closes now. <laughs> okay, I just need screwing and that's about it. The rest of it is fine. <laughs> oh my god, it's too tall. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I want this finished. It's 4 a.m. I'm tired. I made the right color choice with the box, with the project box. Yeah, it's looking good. Let's just see if it works quickly with this person stereo. Okay, so I'm back here at the Amiga side of the room. Okay, so let's. Okay, that is the mixer output. Let's connect this to the Amiga, and this is to the mixer and your ears. <laughs> Amiga's audio. Okay, let's put something on that's familiar. You've heard of my song Utopia, which you know plays in the background in some of my videos. And if I turn it now. It's a stereo. You have to have headphones on to notice this, by the way. I take it all the way, it goes to mono. I like it just, just here. This is perfect. It just has more substance, more depth than you know, it does when it's completely separated. Thank you so much for joining me throughout this project and uh, you know it's been fun, it's been great and uh, I'm, I'm just happy that I've got this now. <laughs>